Well, first, I don't know when I left INCAP. I ceased to be director uh, after 12 years because we had such a competent group of Central Americans. And my job had been to build an institute for Central America. Soper's original idea was that I would go down for a year and then come to Washington and uh, be, be the regional advisor. But that <laughs> obviously was, uh, was impractical. Uh, at any rate, uh, I felt I sh uh, that I should leave it for the Central Americans to take over. And uh, for the next 13 years, Moises Baer, who had been a leader in the work on, uh, on Quashiorcor, served uh, as the director. And with the, uh, with the strong uh, staff, research staff and, and others, uh, things went very well, and uh, they were they had a had a budget over a million dollars, and uh, the quotas had gone up to sixty two thousand five hundred, and it was clearly successful and and world uh, famous at twenty five years, and then uh, um, Carlos Tejada, who had been, uh, well, he'd been very outstanding in his period at Mass General Hospital in Boston, and I'd heard about that. And uh, uh, when he came to uh, volunteer to join INCAP, I was absolutely delighted, and he proved to be a, a, uh, an exceptional scientific leader. He led the Inter-American Atherosclerosis Project that I, I mentioned. Well, at any rate, he was bringing uh, fresh ideas and uh, NCAP was continuing to prosper uh, until the day that uh, a, a newly formed terrorist group came in and kidnapped him and his, uh, the um, uh, executive officer. And he never, he never returned to NCAP. And INCAP never had the leadership or the support after that. When I left uh, INCAP after 12 years, uh, I was reluctant to do so, but I felt strongly that it had to be a Central American institution. One of the principles from the beginning would be that there would be no consultants or expatriates coming in and Running, uh, running things. It had to be a Central American institution. Well, if I didn't turn it over when there were competent people to lead it, I, I would be violating that to principle. On the other hand, when I accepted an offer of, uh, at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT, to set up a department, a new department at MIT of nutrition and food science, I did so with the condition that for the first five years, I could return every summer to INCAP. And I did, uh, and uh, with Joaquin Caravioto of uh, Mexico, who was assistant director for a time, uh, we gave summer courses in uh, public health nutrition, and I continued uh, my research on uh, nutrition and infection. and. Uh, uh, there was sort of a seamless, tr a seamless transition uh, right through because everyone was so dedicated to the same thing and knew each other so well. Uh, well, uh, after I'd been at uh, MIT uh, for uh, 15 years or so and the department was well established and again world famous, um, I was invited to set up the uh, World Hunger Program at the United Nations University in uh, Tokyo, Japan. Uh, and this was one of three areas in which the uh, uh, UN uh, uh, Assembly had uh, uh, indicated that uh, this, that 
the United Nations University should be uh, working. And the fortunate thing there was the f funding that I had, a million dollars a year for expert committees and, and groups, and uh, uh, actually another million for fellowships and so on. And that, that went for six years, and that uh, has made uh, uh, some impact. And uh, I established the uh, uh, International Nutrition Foundation to carry on some of the work uh, that had been done under the United Nations University when the interest of the United Nations University shifted. So overall, uh, between uh, the fellowships that came to INCAP and the fellowships under UNU. And then I received a $5 million uh, five-year grant uh, when I was 82 for a fellowship program much like the one that had initiated uh, INCAP to strengthen developing country nutrition and health institutions, universities, throughout the developing world. So uh, overall, uh, the opportunity to provide perhaps well over a thousand fellowships to people from developing countries has been a source of great satisfaction. Clearly the success of INCAP and the department at MIT, and the uh, food and nutrition program of the uh, United Nations uh, have been sources of, uh, uh, of great satisfaction. But uh, I think overall I would say the opportunity to raise money and arrange for fellowships. It's the training that we've been able to give I've, through a variety of mechanisms uh, to uh, uh, people from developing countries. Well, my first would be to do it, that it's important, it's interesting, it's rewarding, and uh, it leads to a very worthwhile life. I, I'm not sure that uh, I know what retirement is. Uh, I, but I did finally uh, uh, s stop uh, downhill skiing on the steep trails when I was 90. And I, uh, two years ago, I, uh, now I turned over the uh, International Nutrition Foundation to one of my uh, former students uh, from Chile, Ricardo Huawei. Um, and uh, now, uh, partly because I, also don't want to leave my, life, my wife alone, I'm, I'm concentrating on writing. And uh, I'm finding great satisfaction in that. Uh, it isn't exactly retiring, it's sort of doing what I've been done all my life. Maybe my comment on retirement is don't. Well, I'd like to conclude by emphasizing that INCAP was the product of the vision of many people and their, and their hard work. Uh, I've mentioned the staff of NCAP. Uh, I've mentioned the strong support that uh, received from the directors of public health of the, men, of the member countries. Uh, I've mentioned the uh, Scientific uh, Advisory Committee. I've mentioned the uh, 
uh, fellowship uh, uh, program, which was absolutely crucial in the de in the development uh, of uh, of NCAP. Uh, it it was a team effort uh, that succeeded, uh, perhaps by by its success, attracting more uh, very good people uh, and support. And uh, after 12 years, my leaving to go to MIT made no difference. It it's uh, its mystique, its mode of action uh, was well established. Now, from the beginning, uh, there was an effort to be sure that everyone in the Institute was informed. And uh, uh, once a week, uh, there was a staff meeting. At the staff meeting, people were supposed to report any uh, uh, activities that they planned or anything of, of interest or report trip to the country and so on to keep uh, everyone informed. And it was such at such a staff meeting 30 years later that the kidnappers uh, came in and singled out the uh, singled out the director. I looking back it was an extraordinary privilege for me to be associated with this group of suburb uh, Central American professionals that soon attracted uh, very good people from other countries uh, in Latin America and uh, some people uh, gave uh, uh, Cipriano Conoso of, uh, of Spain um, Ivan Began of Belgium, um, and um, Jean-Pierre Havec of uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, came down and, and devoted a very significant part of their professional careers uh, to, uh, with great enthusiasm, uh, in developing the programs uh, of NCAP. But NCAP was always a Central American institution. No expatriate ever came in and told them what to do.